Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. We're back in the bar for a foolproof challenge. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. We have had some renovations going on and we finally have the bar back behind us. So it looks familiar. It feels <laughs> familiar. It feels like home. It does feel like home. I do miss our outdoor adventures though. Well, we'll Already? get back to those soon enough, I am absolutely sure. Uh, this is a blind that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm limiting it to three bottles. I'm glad. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the Sazerac uh, high proof blind, I, I guess. What we've got is uh, three bottles starting with the most affordable one, it's Benchmark Full Proof. It is 125 proof, aged three years from Buffalo Trace. Got it for $20 in Indiana. Unbelievable. Next up is another Buffalo Trace bottle. This is E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, the 2021 release. This one is 127.3 proof, aged seven to eight years roughly from Buffalo Trace. $73 we got this one for, which is a steel but in oregon if you find that bottle that's what you get it for last up is 1792 full proof that's a barton 1792 product also 125 proof like the benchmark full proof uh age is about eight years we think uh fifty dollars is what we paid for that around here and so those three are going to go up against each other tonight what do you think i think i like being a cheap date so we'll see how that benchmark performs <laughs> i think we need to get right to it yep julie poured them i mixed them around totally blind here we are going to nose the glasses taste them from right to left left to right ap test and then we'll make our decisions let's get started glass number one here we go it smells great it does smell great <laughs> like really good i want to say that it smells yummy yeah, you're on record now. <laughs> you nailed it. I got nice oak. Yeah, like a dry oak. Definitely a berry flavor mixed in there. I say strawberry, caramel. Yep. Vanilla. Vanilla. <laughs> Working pretty good at this. I, I like this. Yeah, and uh, like a medium brown sugar on there. Not too dark, but nice. Good nose on that one. Good nose on that one. I like that very much. On Last the two? two? Yeah. Ooh, this one makes me happy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh man, I'm getting lots of oak. Definitely hints of caramel, brown sugar. I would say more. Gosh. Like it's there's Rick House here. There's some barrel, like yeah. The nose, the the nose of walking into a Rick House. Licorice and leather. Which licorice? Black or red? Black. Wow. It's a little. I hint, guess I could see that. There's a little hint of spice in there. Yeah. Hmm. I like that one. And that's a bit of a letdown after glass one for me. Well, let's see uh, what three has to offer. Here we go. <sighs> very different than the other two. Whoa, very wildly, different. Wildly different compared to the first two. Bubble gum. Oh, I'm not getting that at all. This is the <laughs> this is the first one that I had of a hint of what that proof's gonna be like. It's just a little proofy on the nose. Yeah. I'm not getting a ton on this one. It's almost a bit muddled. I think there's some butterscotch here. The brown sugar on here is deep really dark. It does smell sugary. Are you ready to get to sipping? I am. Here we go. Glass number one. Let's do this. Oh, wait. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I almost forgot. Oh, there, this is my first whiskey of the day. Yeah. And I, it is a proofy. We should have warmed up. I was like, <laughs> we should have warmed up. I didn't get much on that because it just really... Got it. Uh, it fogged up uh, my senses. <laughs> I can tell this is going to be delicious, by the way. That but was, I'm going to have to sip it again. <laughs> that is a wave of flavor. Ooh. Oh. Dang. I'm getting all cherry and caramel there on the palate. It's it, There's so much happening here. I would say this is a vanilla strawberry, like a vanilla coated strawberry. I got to be careful on my sips because I didn't pour all that much in each glass because I knew what the proof points were going to be. I don't want to waste them. Oh boy, that got a nice viscosity. It's lingering mm. with tons of sweetness. Mm. Strawberry is really coming rushing back. And there's a little bit of the candied cherry on the, uh, mm. on the finish here. Oh wow. I like the vanilla aspect of this one too. I'm going to save this for the, for the way back and the yeah. baby test of course, but I don't want to. I don't want to get influenced by the the presence <laughs> of the proof right now. Right, right. Whatever it is, I want more of it. 
<laughs> I think we're gonna say that about all three glasses. I hope so. Let's uh, drink some water, cleanse our palates, and we'll get on the glass too. Ooh, yum. Cinnamon. Ooh, I like that. That's a cinnamon oh cherry. Oh my gosh, oak. that's delicious. Surprisingly well balanced, and the proof doesn't hit you over the head. No, I was thinking this one was cinnamon and smiles, and then I remember I said on the nose that this glass makes me happy. Oh my goodness. Well, what sort of love affair are you having with this glass oh, number no. two right now? Um, viscosity doesn't seem to be uh, as high on glass two as it was on glass one. It's a little bit thin, mm -hmm. but that cinnamon spice definitely lingers. I think there's like a pecan here. Mm. Pecan, pecan, mm. pecan. Somebody well, goofed right. on us one time for saying pecan. Pecan, <laughs> pecan. Ooh, it tastes like a, is it hot tamales? The red, what were the red discs? Hot tamales? The little chewable ones were the hot tamales. I almost spilled my glass there. Oh, it was not that Got one. I'm excited. thinking about the the hard ones. Just cinnamon discs. Just the cinnamon discs that you like mix in with your Christmas candies or something. Just not, to, not just Christmas to trick candies. People? I'm sorry. Because they think they're getting something sweet and they get something hot. <laughs> Grandma yeah. gets upset. It's I was a whole thinking thing. like maybe you put on top of your Christmas cookies. My bad. Or you um, could just trick them into eating that. <laughs> I'm sure I've done that. Probably. Uh, do you know what I used to do? I might have talked about this before when mm. I worked in an office. Uh, they used to supply candies for everybody. Yeah. And so I would take some M&Ms and I would throw them in with the Skittles bag and I would take some Skittles and throw them in with the M&Ms bag. That is not nice. Just to, when I was a brat. Uh, cinnamon <laughs> and a ton of powdered sugar on the finish mm. for that one. I want one more sip. Oh, now that you said powdered sugar, I was, it's actually on it's the finish. It's kind of overwhelming, isn't it? Well, yeah, it got a little bit dry mm -hmm. on the finish, it, but it was a, a sugary, powdered sugary dryness. Yeah, it's. It's actually pretty delightful, whatever yeah. this is. I, after the nose, because I didn't get a ton on the nose here, this palette is really pleasant. I don't know if this is particularly a better sip than last one. I'm just enjoying those like more powerful flavors that I got. Yeah, so the, the, the funny thing about glass too is it goes from, for me at least, sort of a lackluster nose to a very nice palette to a wonderful finish. Mm -hmm. It just gets better as you sip it. Yeah. And so that's something that I'm excited about there. Nice little journey there. I'm ready for glass three to see what she's got to offer. It tastes like roasted nuts. Roasted nuts. Are you sure there's not a Jim Beam product in here? <laughs> you don't believe me, huh? Just making sure <laughs> we got the same glass. Uh, I, I don't get the nuts on that one. Um, I suppose maybe I do. The praline. Praline, praline, oh, however you say it. Praline, yeah. There's some of that going on there. You're going with pecan, pecan, praline, pra 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 praline. Praline, that's definitely not right. Let's just pronounce it <laughs> every single pronunciation across the country. We're going to hit them all today. Uh, I get bubblegum, butterscotch, pralines, um, a little cinnamon on the finish, vanilla on the finish that is making my mouth water. There's some dry oak here. My second sip is not as nutty. I'm getting a lot more caramel like. It is sticky though, so some sort of, like I'm sticking with that honey roasted. So maybe it was just yeah. like a honey roasted versus really just the nuts. So that first sip was so have, nutty to me. There is some sort of roasted nut showing up on the nose now that mm. I didn't get before. So funny. I wouldn't recognize that flavor on any of these three bottles. Mm. Wow, that is interesting. It is nothing like the others. Mm -mm. Viscosity is good, not great. It's balanced on the tongue though, from the palate to the finish, mm -hmm. another nice journey. And on this next sip, I got a lot of cherry flavor there. And I think it's more like a cherry juice versus like an actual fruit cherry. That's interesting. This one's giving me heartburn. <laughs> I don't know where I'm gonna go with this. I was actually- I don't either. Do you have any idea what these are? Uh, no. I, I mean, I could, I could make assumptions, but I'm always wrong. Two and three drank a little bit thinner yeah. than glass one, though glass one was the one that I was like, oh yeah, we're drinking tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go back the other way now, see if we find any new flavors on these, and I can't wait, I'm so excited. Yeah. We're gonna start with glass three. Yep. Are you ready to go? I have some water first. Right on. Are you ready? Always. <laughs> glass three. <laughs> it's a nice sip. Yeah. This one, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one, to be perfectly honest, but there is a nice caramel note to it. She's a little spicy. A little, yeah, a little spicy. It is a drier oak though. Yeah. It's not the sweet oak from the first two. Back to number two? Class two it is. Mm. Oh. That one. 
This one does make me happy. I was thinking the nose had a cinnamon nose now, but not the, the cinnamon candy, but actually baking cinnamon on the nose. Mm -hmm. And now I was expecting that cinnamon burst. Now I got a little bit of strawberry on that. I got a little mint on that too. Ooh, nice. uh, some peppermint showed up yeah. there and, and almost like a pine tree on the nose now, which is a little different. That's nothing like what I got in the beginning. In, I literally was just thinking like, ooh, I like the finish on this. It almost feels fresh, like after you brush your teeth and you were talking about the pine <laughs> and the mint. Well, that's nice. When you're done sipping this one, you'll have minty fresh breath. Exactly. How very, very thoughtful <laughs> of whatever distiller put that together. Shall we move on to glass number one? I think we should. This one's interesting because I wouldn't say that the flavors are as pronounced in this one as say glass number two, but it feels like it's built better. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think that that's a good tasting note. It drinks rich. Yeah, yeah there's a decadence here yeah. that I don't think you get with the others. I call glass three decadent brown sugar on the nose when mm -hmm. we were first going through, but the overall experience, for me, it's glass number one right now. Yeah. I have to say, they're not at all what I expected. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying the heck out of all three of them. There's no losers here. Not, not, not at all. Nah, 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 nah. No. Nah. Nah. The people want to know. <laughs> Who wins the foolproof challenge? We're gonna have to A-B test to find out. Time to get on to A-B testing. We'll be right back with our final thoughts. I'll be honest, um, 1792, mm -hmm. I have zero idea what that should taste like. <laughs> zero. Like it's just not, we have, I don't know how many bottles of 1792 we more have, we should. but I don't know if I've had more than two sips of them. Yeah, not something Ever. you reach for. In my entire, like in the entire time we've been drinking bourbon. Yeah, we don't drink it much. <laughs> I might have beaten Phil to the punch here. I just literally went from experience and enjoyability and grown up tasty notes. They're all unique, they're all satisfying, and given the price points, I'm very interested to see where these fall. Me too. Do you have yours ready to go? I am ready to go. I'm ready to go as well. This was actually the fastest decision I have made probably ever. I'm honestly shocked by this. I can't wait to find out what your third place is. Do you want to lead off? Hold on, I just want this one. Guess she wasn't ready after all. <laughs> okay. Notes written, we're ready to go. Who's your third place? In third place for me is glass number three, actually. Not the same as me. The entire time, the first two glasses had that sweetness that I'm always looking for mm -hmm. and that flavor profile. This one felt like a little bit of a, not an outlier, but just different enough and pal like for my palate, different enough that it ended up in third place. Still delicious. Uh, for me, that one is second place. The longer I sat with it, the more I enjoyed the unique flavors. Let's find out what the heck that is. 1792 full proof. Okay, so our 125 proof are here uh, from 1792. That is a $50 bottle. Let's get on to second place. See if there's more surprises around the corner. Who do you have in second? In second place, I'm going right up the line, my glass number two. I literally love the flavors on here, but when it came down to it, my glass number one just had that viscosity, the overall experience, the flavors that I really liked. For glass number two, it was an easy drinker. I actually probably would drink it every single day. It's delicious. I yep. loved it. It just, when I, apples to apples, it didn't hold up to my glass number one. Glass number two for me finishes in third. It's a little thin. I didn't find it overly satisfying. The nose was pretty weak. The palette was great. The finish was really nice, but it didn't have the uniqueness for me of glass three, and it definitely didn't have the experience of glass one. Let's find out what is glass number two. I want to know who finished second and third before we reveal the winner, even though by now you know. It's the benchmark. Not a huge surprise there. And I think it's an amazing value at 20, you said $20? For $20. For $20. If you see it on the shelf, flip and buy that. It is. Yeah. It is really delicious. And like I said, cinnamon and smiles, it, this sip made me so happy. It's fantastic. And I've seen people torch this bottle online. Yeah. And then you always see that guy in the comments going, what do you want for 20 bucks? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This bottle. This is a daily drinker one. It hung in there with these yeah. other two and you actually put it above 1792 foolproof. Yeah. 
And I said it before and I'll say it again, this was a really close matchup. That bottle is fantastic. Benchmark Foolproof, I think it's great. If you haven't, if you've been walking past it and you're ignoring it, that's, mm, it's on par with OGD114 in my opinion yeah. for that really yes. affordable barrel proof whiskey. Yeah. I think it's great. We can't even get it here. Can't. <laughs> well, that leaves our glass number one, which is letter B which of course you have deduced that it's the E.H. Taylor. Uh, Taylor Barrel Proof, what can you say about that? That is awfully satisfying whiskey, very tasty, mm -hmm. and it uh, absolutely, I wouldn't say decimated, but it certainly stood out. The, ex the overall experience on this was just superior, unfor not fortunately and unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, if you can, definitely if you can get it for MSRP like we get it, it's a, I would say a definite buy. That's a no brainer. Yeah, but I will say, first go round, that benchmark, I was like, I don't know, this could be my winner. And that was, what, $60 less, yeah. or $50 less than you can buy this for, so. The decadence of a man with a top hat on the side of your whiskey, that's what you're really yeah. getting with the Taylor. I will say this for the benchmark, one last tasting note that I wanna say, the Statesman from Old Forester is mm. the only other bottle that I've had that sort of extreme powdered sugar finish yeah. on a bourbon. I want to tip my hat to the 1792 as well. Your top hat? <laughs> yes. Naturally. Kudos. What They're more hairs. is there to say? These yeah. are great whiskeys. I had a great time. Did you have fun? I had so much fun. Well, it's great to be back in the bar and we hope that you enjoyed this as much as we did. Let us know of these three, which is your favorite and from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. She is good. These are great. <laughs>